Jonathan Mason, welcome to the University of Huddersfield. Thank you very much. Um, today you're receiving your honorary award. Uh, you're regarded as the pharmacy czar. Is that uh, how they... How Until they say? very recently, yes, I was. Yes. Right. Yes. What do you see as the challenges facing pharmacy today? Okay, I think one of the main challenges is around workload pressures. Um, there's a, a lot of things that pharmacy can do and probably should be doing. Uh, so there's a lot of pressure on people to deliver a large volume of work. And the real challenge for me and for the whole profession really will be how we face up to those challenges of pressure in terms of workload to deliver a wider range of services, become more clinically focused um, and move away from that sort of chasing bits of paper, chasing the volume of what pharmacy has been doing in the past and focus on a service delivery model and really sort of take on board the more clinical challenges that new pharmacists have been trained to deliver. Um, and for me, that's the, the, really, the really big challenge. We have this cohort of new graduates coming through. They're trained in clinical roles. They want to deliver clinical services, but then there's all that pressure on them to do dispensing, to deliver a volume of service. And that balance is very difficult to achieve. If you had a magic wand uh, and you could just pick one thing that would ease the way, what would you do? One thing, I'd make much better use of IT systems. So electronic prescribing, so you're no longer chasing bits of paper, you can plan your workload more. Um, and you can enable better use of the wider pharmacy workforce to ensure that the pharmacist does the bit that only the pharmacist can deliver, so the clinical services and make better use of your technical staff and technical abilities, so the, the IT systems. And uh, what's stopping this happening then? Uh, well, why doesn't it just happen already? Well, <laughs> that's the $64,000 question really. Um, there's a lot of barriers in the way. Um, there's a lot of policy issues that get in the way of wider rollout of electronic prescribing. Um, we're starting to see more of it but it's, um, there's a lot of system pressures in the way. So GP systems not talking to pharmacy systems, all of the GP systems working in diff slightly different ways, the pharmacy systems working in different ways. And that's a real challenge in trying to break down those barriers so that actually the systems talk to each other is a real issue. It's not insurmountable and I think it's relatively easy, it's just the will to do it because nobody really wants to take control and say it's my job to sort it and that's a real problem um, and I think the other big barrier is pressure within some of the large pharmacy chains on their staff to deliver high volume workload so not enabling their pharmacists to act as pharmacists in some ways so they're seen as a more technical function rather than a clinical service and the big barrier there is the way this, the contract is set up for community pharmacy. So it's still very much a volume-based contract rather than service-based. So do you need champions then in, yeah. in various sectors of the NHS to, to move this through? Uh, Absolutely. You need champions within commissioning, so the people who are actually commissioning services from pharmacy. You need champions within management to say, do you know what, we need to focus more on the clinical side than on the volume of the bits of green paper, so the prescriptions that are coming through. So they can then enable their staff to deliver the wider range of services that's needed by the public and by the NHS. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.